Hey guys, in this video, I'll provide a mathematical visualization for reactive power concept. The mathematical visualization helped me understand the concept when I was confused with all the analogies available out there. Here, I'll provide the real concept in simple steps without any analogy with some visualization. Before starting, I want you to forget all definitions or analogies for reactive power that you read. Here we will build the understanding of reactive power gradually from level 0. So for now assume that we only understand two quantities. One is voltage which is electric pressure applied to electrons at a point and one is current which is simply rate of flow of electrons. As reactive power is observed in AC systems, let's consider an AC voltage which will cause the current I is equals to I m sin omega t in a simple R circuit. Now let's define a new variable P which is instantaneous power given by this equation. This is obtained by substituting V and I and applying basic trigonometrics for 2 sin A sin B we obtain an expression for power given by this equation. Let's build a mathematical intuition of how this function is plotted as this will be a key concept in realizing reactive power flow. Here as you can see that this function is having a frequency which is twice of the original voltage waveform. Cos omega t is plotted with this blue curve and then the twice of this is obtained, the twice frequency is obtained with this curve and 1 minus cos omega t will be first the mirror image or the inverse of cos 2 omega t across x-axis and then the shifting this one constant one will cause a shift in upward direction. With this understanding let's look at the VI waveforms and VI with power waveforms in our circuit. No shift in current and an always positive power is obtained across the load as it can be observed that its frequency is twice the frequency of voltage and current. Practically, there will always be some inductance or capacitance in power system. For now, let's consider only inductance. Now can you think how the waveform will look like for inductance? Let's visualize mathematically. The current will be shifted by an angle phi. The instantaneous power for this system is given by substituting V and I in this equation and with simple trigonometric manipulations we obtain this generalized formula when the impedance contains both R and X. Visualization of this generalized formula might be a little difficult for now. So let's look at a purely inductive circuit. For a purely inductive circuit this term here will be zero. Why? We can understand it with this example that for an inductive circuit the resistance will be zero and when this will be substituted in this formula for phi it will give us an angle of 90 degree and then the cos of 90 will give us a value of zero. Substituting that term equals to zero will lead us to this formula of power Vm Im by 2 minus cos 2 omega t minus 90. Let's build an intuitive understanding for power function of inductor circuit. Simply, how the function of this P will look like. Well, for cos omega t, it will be the blue graph. For twice the frequency, it will again be two cycles. And then the negative and shifted cos function will look like the yellow curve. Let's see how V waveforms and power waveforms will look for an L circuit. As this can be observed that there is no vertical shift in power waveform which is the yellow waveform in second plot. One interesting thing is that we have positive and negative power both. So what does this negative power represent? This negative power will unlock the reactive power concept. Let's understand this negative power. To understand the concept of negative power, we have to understand 
the properties of inductor if you look at the first one by fourth part of the cycle we can see that the current is entering into the inductor at its positive terminal or its higher voltage terminal in the second one by fourth cycle the current is entering from the low voltage side and in the third quadrant it is entering from again positive side in the fourth quadrant again from negative side what useful information can we extract by observing this property of an inductor to understand that let us look at the behavior of resistance as you can see here that the current in resistance will always enter from the higher potential side the positive voltage side and if you observe the source then we can see that the current leaves from the higher potential side or the positive terminal side this is just a simple trick to understand that which element is behaving as in as a load and which element is behaving as a source this simple mathematical convention is adopted in electrical to differentiate between a source and a load now if we observe the inductor's property then is then in these two parts the inductor is behaving as load and in these two parts inductor is behaving as source so whenever there is a negative power in a load it means that it is supplying back the power that it has stored this amount of power that is stored and sent back is reactive power in a circuit let's look at a more practical case when impedance consists of both r and x this formula here for simplicity let's keep the magnet magnitude equal to 1 it will not change the basic concept of reactive power now if we look at this whole function of power with one magnitude this function here represents a, wa a varying waveform and this is a constant value which depends on impedance and this term decides the amount of reactive power in a circuit let's see how two cases that we have seen are when the load is purely resistive all the power is positive and hence nothing is being stored here the shifting term is one in second case all energy received was stored in one by fourth of cycle and sent back in next one by fourth the cycle here the shifting term is zero that is why the power curve is not shifted in the vertical direction at all and all the energy is considered as reactive power now let's observe the transition in instantaneous power curve when this term cos phi or the shifting factor starts from purely resistive circuit that is one to purely inductive circuit that is zero here we will increase the value of x and will decrease the value of r just for illustrative purpose to maintain the value of impedance constant but you can get, a, get an intuition of how this curve moves or started shifting downwards when the inductive part of the impedance increases here as you can see that with an increase in x the curve is starting downwards which simply means that more and more energy is being stored and sent back in the circuit shifting of p curve in x direction is due to the phi present in the second cos 2 omega t minus phi term this is shifting this curve in x direction and the cos phi the first term is shifting this term this curve the power curve in vertical direction now let's discuss this plot at different time intervals the first where the inductive part of impedance is very less the all power that is appearing across load is positive which means that there is nothing 
nothing is being stored in the impedance or in the load if you observe at the second time instant or the second snapshot we see that some portion is being stored as reactive power because the value of x is increasing if you look at the third instant then the value of x is increased further so more reactive power is being stored in the final instant x is at its full value and r is less r is zero so the whole energy is being stored as reactive power and sent back to the source simply this amount of energy which is stored and sent back represents the reactive power portion of total power this is all from my side in this video if you still have any doubts you can comment in the comment section and if you understood something new with this video you can share this video with your friends thank you guys